Thank you, Kate, and, and thanks everyone for listening. Uh, and thank you for kind introduction. So yes, I do look after a stroke uh, across the patch uh, as well as uh, the digital part in the trust. Uh, but I just wanted to share a few things uh, for last three year journey. And I made this journey. We made this journey as a team uh, with Prideway and I will share my reflection as well. So challenge for me is to sum up in 10 minutes, but I will have a go. So we started our uh, journey 2018. The stroke unit uh, has been rated D that time. And just like your children's school rating, A being best and D being E being terrible. Uh, and we were D. Uh, we had problem. We had problem patient lying everywhere. Uh, stroke people all over the hospital, stroke patient, the doctors doing ward round till 7 p.m. And we were suffering in terms of uh, providing the care. This is how the stroke get rated. Uh, so you th those who are uh, data specific, uh, this was our rating, uh, which is clearly uh, not acceptable. Uh, but that gives the opportunity for us. So as I said, the potentially there's a harm for patient, wrong patient in wrong ward. Uh, the rounds are carrying on, staff leaving. Nine of the neurologists decided to leave a stroke rota uh, because it was too dangerous, according to them. Uh, this is how staff felt. Uh, we started our journey, start asking people, and essentially there was a doom sense that nothing can be done here. And if you ask the patient, and as, as the best testimony is when your relative comes as a stroke and how they perceive your service, and it wasn't good. So we had to change or we had to shut. I think it was uh, difficult. And that time, I think we started with our ambition is a reliable care in the right place, right time. Very simple message, but the message or sound bites are different and actually doing something was very difficult. And as I mentioned that we were doing the VMI quality improvement work and initially we started doing few of the work stream, uh, the few of the learning implying into stroke and, and some of them you can see here. But what we learned is this is important. It doesn't matter what method we use. What matters is whether hearts and minds are with you in doing the things. And that's that's my learning uh, all the way through uh, significant changes. I think we did mistake proofing. We did a link board We did daily business. I think uh, those who are champion in pride way who will understand this language uh, and we can define this a daily business, which is ELI. Uh, where there is a mistake proofing. We did a lot of 5S, we did a few VSM, uh, but without getting technical jargon, essentially there are so many changes you can do as long as you manage to shift the culture to change. And that was the biggest achievement we managed to do in 2018. I won't go in detail because I can do actually the whole eight hour session on 42 changes, five minutes each, but I think I will just showcase uh, one or two if I may. So this is the work is started, how they stroke patient flow from ED, how they come to the ward, what time we see the patient. We had a clock watch, a stop watch, going through the every patient, where is the blockage. And then we had a team huddle, uh, and we do that every day, 8.45. If you are keen to know how it works, you can come and see. Uh, to ask the question to the team, how can we solve it? And 99% time answer lies within your team, because team know where and how it can be sold. So we had some uh, data point. Uh, we are meeting time. We what we're going to monitor. Uh, so we're going to monitor how quickly patient gets seen by consultant, how people, people quickly patient get managed to stroke bed and, and senior decision maker. Data was there and uh, data is the key. So what you are seeing here in 24 hour clock on the X axis down there, that what time is stroke referral start going up? And this is our learning your business. Do you know your business? And this is the first learning working with the Pride Way. Actually, your referral kick off around 11 o'clock and take the peak in the evening. Your work staff do nine to five work, or they used to do nine to five work. Your senior decision maker go home five o'clock when actually the peak is kicking. And your early morning, there's a peak of referral. Uh, so there's a mismatch, isn't it? That's quite nice. Uh, we can patch that mismatch and we said, OK, we'll design some rotas. We do the SPMP and this stuff and we do all the Excel sheet lovely looking. But life doesn't work like that, does it? Uh, 
So it was hard work for setting the ambition from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. consultant work for senior decision making on the front door. Uh, and I think the team job planning was the key and we started our work there. And that's the most painful bloodletting change we ever did to make sure the consultant time and the junior time matches the stroke admission. We've gone through every cycle of grievances, BMA, and whatever you call us, thrown into the prison uh, to make that change happen. But we were determined, and we were we had a team uh, in our side, and I'll show you that how that the hat work, and this is what we call as a people link. You always have two different hats when you want to make change. Unfortunately, our experience was our hat one was very strong when we wanted to change. So as I said, it's a degradation of consultant. We don't have time for this. Uh, we don't have staff. Uh, you know, I think why should I lose extra money in the private practices? And uh, I think uh, there were threat about BMA and grievances, which we still you'll have those had. But the important thing you will have had of people who want to do change. They can't see outlier in a stroke. They want to do the good to the patient. They cannot continue to do the ward round till 7 p.m. in the night. And they would love to see the patient early in the morning. And I'm glad to tell you that from our vision of 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., now we are 7.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Because the consultant come and see you find it, and the junior find it, and the nurses find it so useful that uh, we work as very different what we used to work. So th this pattern changed now. We have senior decision maker all the time. We have senior decision making early morning as well now. This graph is old. I think I need to change the graph. 7.30 to, uh, uh, to uh, late evening is a new consultant model. So what, how it is valuable? So the consultant on the floor, and now the 82% more patient uh, seen by consultant, there's increased training uh, and the increased supervision of his staff. Uh, the training quality goes up. There's a caring of the patient, no outlier, because the decision has been made to send the patient home or keep in a hospital with a care plan. And is a decreased mortality, and I'll show in a minute uh, about the foster care as well. That job planning become famous uh, all over, uh, but I think still uh, we have the issues come up, and the culture become the solution, so people can set in part of your culture. When we're doing all this stuff, we created our own new uh, innovative way of working. So when you do the huddle and you have the problem, you solve the problem then that and the, the dead day. So for example, people waiting for imaging, the team solved the problem. Now people in a stroke patient don't wait for imaging. We go and send them in a virtual stroke ward where the therapy doctors, nurses can assist them at their home ESD early supported discharge. So they are not waiting in a hospital bed people crying out next to them in a noisy environment. They are on their bed and we are doing the same care. So this is how the innovation developed. With 35% people, we are sending virtual ward now. Uh, this is used to be our people link. This is how we used to do the brain attack team. And now is everything is physical. Uh, everything is happening uh, on the floor. Uh, apologies, I need to wear the mask. So this is our stand work for the leader uh, who is the chair who is doing what uh, and the outcome. So let's focus on outcome. The significant difference how quickly patient got seen by consultant. There was a significant difference in a has you time two hours compared to four hours. We talk about four hour targets in the ED. Length of stay dropped 3.6 day within one month and now it is actually four and a half day less what used to happen uh, before. No outlier. Uh, despite of all the COVID challenges, we had no outlier. We had 35% more improvement uh, in terms of uh, the care we provide, and we are looking after more patient. This is what you become doctor and nurse for, the less people dying in the care, so we are safer. And this is our journey, it's not a one day journey. So turn from all the green, all the red and orange and, and yellow it, and turn all green. It took a little time, but we maintain that. We gone out and we have given so many awards. Our team was very fortunate to have those awards, uh, but it's not about only awards. I think when we had our GOFT assessment, uh, that's very clear uh, that they say that clinical leadership and quality improvement culture was ab absolutely apparent and clear. 
Uh, we did? Yeah. Oh, sorry yeah. to interrupt you, Dimesh. Um, I don't know if you heard the bells, but I'm, I'm afraid we're going to have to just wrap up there. Is there anything you'd like to say just as a final session, a uh, final sentence before we move on? Okay, uh, so I will just sum up there. I think we did a lot of digital adaptation as well into that, and this is our COVID journey being, uh, and uh, the culture is a big issue. As on last slide, and I think we are allowed to fail. Not everything becomes successful. Thank you.